Hey guys, it's Kristen with IcyStarsQuilting.com. This is the video that takes you behind the scenes in the background of the 2021 International Quilt Festival that is in Houston, Texas. So I'm gonna show you all my pictures from the festival. I'm gonna show you what I did. I'm gonna show you what you missed. I'm gonna show you what you can plan on doing if you want to come to this festival someday. I'm just gonna say it. I highly recommend that you put this on your bucket list, okay? The International Quilt Festival in Houston, Texas is the largest quilt show in the entire world. Let that sink in. The largest quilt show in the entire world. Now, I'm not gonna say that there's not other great large quilt shows out there, okay? But this is the biggest and you definitely want it on your bucket list. So again, hi, I'm Kristen with IcyStarsQuilting.com. Welcome to my channel. Here I share tips, tricks, and tutorials for the modern quilter. I make things easy. That's my whole job, my whole goal is to make things easy and make them fun because I love, love, love to create and I love to teach. If that is what you're interested in and you think that sounds good, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button down there. Check out the links below this video for more information as well and where to find me on all the social channels. Okay, so let's put it into perspective, okay? The convention center, which you can see in these gorgeous pictures right here, I mean, Y'all, the weather could not have gotten any more beautiful on this day. It was amazing. This convention center, the whole bottom floor of this convention center is 547,000 square feet. That's a big number. But like, it's really hard to put in terms of like, how big actually is that? So the average American football field is 57,600 square feet. You could get nine and a half football fields of nothing but quilting. That is incredible. So not only do you have all of those booths with all of those quilting things and all of the show quilts and all of that, you're surrounded by people who get what you do. This is people who get really giddy over stitching. It's, it's incredible. So the way that they have this show set up is they have half of the downstairs floor is the show quilt, right? All the ones that are like winners, they have amazing, amazing quilts there that would just like make your jaw hit the floor. I don't know how they do it. Okay, people are gifted and it's so beautiful to see. I took so many pictures of quilts that there's no way that I can like pick a favorite, but if you keep watching this video, I'm gonna have kind of like a scroll at the end where you're gonna see all these quilts and I want you to just stop and be inspired. Okay, turn off all your distractions, focus on these quilts and be inspired because they're incredible, okay? Now, so they have half of it is like show quilts, right? They have the prize winning quilts, they have the people's choice, they have like uh, different sponsored quilts, they also have contests and then there's like the cherry wood fabric contest, I'm gonna show you all that in a minute. But then the other half is all the vendors and booths. Now I will say that this year was a bit smaller of a quilt show, okay? I could notice a sizable difference in the quilt show. Um, it wasn't as big this year. They didn't have as many booths. They, they canceled last year's quilt show in 2020. Obviously we know why they canceled it. We don't need to go there, but um, I know that that was really hard for a lot of the vendors. And you know, I work closely with a lot of vendors and not having that giant quilt show and that giant draw of traffic, as it did for many businesses in 2020, it really hit them hard. So they were kind of hesitant to make all that stock and stock up on all the fabric or whatever they were selling, make the haul here to Houston, set up the booth, pay the booth fees and all of that. They were hesitant, right? We didn't know how things were gonna go um, until fairly recently. So they just um, opted out this year. And I know that a lot of international people were not able to travel to this show this year. There's this booth that has all this Japanese fabric. It's imported fabric. And it is some of the coolest stuff, you know? I know 
that here in America that we're very, very spoiled with our fabrics, okay? We have it plentiful here, okay? Especially because I live in a larger town and there's several quilt shops nearby. It's plentiful. We don't have to pay the exporting fees that Canada or the import export, whatever they are, those fees that Canada has to pay, that Australia has to pay. Um, I know that significantly increases your pricing, right? But it's really cool to see those fabrics that are from everywhere else in the world come here and be able to dig through them and touch them and play with them and like feel the quality. Like it's just, it's incredible. I love them. So I was pretty disappointed they weren't there this year. I'm really, really feeling like the shows that are in 2022, QuiltCon, the spring market show, all of that, and then the International Quilt Fest again in 2022, which is a year from now, is going to be just huge because I think with this downtime that we've had in the market, a lot of people have picked up these skills, right? So, I mean, raise a hand in the comments, Tell me if you're one of those people who took up this craft during this uh, 2020 downtime. Let's call it that, okay? Um, I think that this industry is going to come back really, really big. And it was so good to talk to all of these people again. Because like you said, I work with a lot of the businesses and I love them. I love to meet and see people and find out what their newest products are. I love to... Um, you know, play with the fabrics. And I got to talk to a lot of different people and meet a lot of new faces too. And I actually got to meet several of my followers from this channel and of my blog. I hope that you know that if you're watching this, it means the world to me that you came up and said hi. I shared this picture on Instagram of like the week before quilt show while they were still getting ready. This is taken from the second story. So um, there's a little like peephole window that you can look through. This is only a portion of the quilts that are out there. Like there are just so many amazing, talented quilters that have their works of art in this show. So I took a long arm class. It was on free motion quilting of the dream panel. Now this is the panel that I've admired for a really, really long time. So the instructor is Kelly Ashton. This is me and her right here. Aren't we so cute? We had the best time in that class. She pulled in some of her original designs, showed us how to quilt these designs. And then as you see in this picture right here, this is what the classroom looked like. There's several, several machines in here. This is my finished piece almost finished piece. I didn't, I didn't bind it yet. You know, I've been busy, so I didn't bind it yet, but I'm really, really pleased with the way that it came out. I love the metallic thread on there. It's really, really nice. And I highly, highly recommend if you are coming to town, check out those classes because they start about a week before Quilt Fest actually takes place. So check out those classes and see if there's something specific that you're interested in and a skill that you could learn in person. Would you like to see what I actually purchased? I did go shopping. I mean, I knew that going in. Like I was totally gonna buy some new fabric, but when you go to Quilt Fest, like there's a lot of things that you aren't able to get your hands on in a normal store. So yes, I totally bought some fabric. Um, this one right here is one that I got and I'm gonna try and like focus. There we go. There we go. So this is one that I got. It just has a bunch of circles on it. And these are all one yard cuts. And um, I was able to get these for uh, $13 a yard. So there's that. And then I got these two coordinating pieces that are also one yard cuts, but aren't those so pretty? They just, I love the different texture, the different um, colors, patterns, shapes. Like it just, it's very, very eye catching to me. I know it's a good place to pick up just your, your basics as well, because there's a lot of fabric stores and just regular quilting stores that buy up a booth at the show. I got this one that's just, it's just a black splatter on like a, a linen-y white color. It's not like a pure white. It's kind of a, um, I don't know, a really light cream color. But um, I just thought, you know, as a as an extra or as like a background fabric or something, accent fabric, it's really good. It's really neutral. I liked it, so I bought it. It's not special. You could probably find it at the fabric store, but I was there and it was there and the times just came together. It's just kind of like a watercolor look to it. But um, this panel is by Moda and you can find this online. Again, it's not, not exclusive. 
they just happened to have it and I really, really liked it. And I liked the other panel that I've shown several times that I've used several labels from. That's a Figo panel, okay? So you can look up either Figo or Moda. Moda has the more watercolor one. Figo is a little bit more, um, I don't know, modern, bright colors, some line artwork on it. But both of those panels I really, really love for your quilt labels. I couldn't pass this up. Okay, I went by the Connecting Threads booth um, at least three times, okay? <laughs> at least three times when I was there. And I kept seeing this quilt kit and I loved it. I don't know when this is gonna go. <laughs> Uh, actually appear on my to-do list. It's there, but it's like so far back, so many pages back that I don't know when it's gonna get done. But they had this quilt there in person and the, uh, the lady saw me looking at it and she said, we don't have very many of those left. That sold out in our store within minutes online. And that was all I needed. That's it, I, I have to buy it, I have to buy it. Okay, so now let me show you which quilt kit it is. There it is. Look at that quilt. Is that not me? And so if you don't know, so it has like the pattern, you can kind of see like the layout right there in the back. And then it also comes with all of the fabric that you need to make this quilt top. Like I said, so the finished size is approximately 52 by 60. And um, this is from Connecting Threads. So you can get this from their website if they're in stock. They had several other quilt kits that were just absolutely amazing and I loved them. So I picked one, I felt good about it, and then I went to the next booth and I found another quilt kit. So this is the last quilt kit that I bought. And it's not really a kit, it's more of a panel, okay? So it says there are always flowers for those who wish to see them. And um, that positive, happy glass half full person in me got like all excited and I just, I loved it, right? I just, I fell in love with all of these watercolors. Now the finished quilt, let me show you what the finished quilt looks like. So this quilt kit has the panel, which is 56 by 77, but it also has like this fabric to go around the border as well. So you can make this whole quilt top right here with this kit and then you have to find like a backing to go with it. <sighs> Guys, that's really all the fabric I bought this time. I mean, I went into the show thinking, I don't need anything. I don't need anything. I have projects that I haven't been able to work on. It's been a really, really busy summer here at my house. I have kind of like a backlog of projects that I'm working on. I really, really want to get a lot of them done. So um, the last thing that I needed was a ton more fabric. Um, one new thing that I did this year was I was a quilt angel. Okay, so if you... Um, can imagine the size of this show, you can possibly guess the size of the staff needed to make this show run smoothly, okay? So I volunteered my time to work up at the show and I basically had my little section on the quilt floor, which is where I met several of you, um, where I just walk around, make sure people aren't touching the quilts, okay? You know, when you go to a quilt show, um, those, that's somebody else's property, okay? Somebody else has worked immensely hard to be able to get to that point where they're being shown in that status, right? It's an international quilt festival. So that was my job, just to make sure that like nobody was touching the quilts, nobody's eating or drinking on the quilt floor, and um, also, we get to wear like this little fancy necklace that shows that we are all knowing in what we do <laughs> are walking around and you know people come and ask questions or like where's this specific quilt or where are the landscape quilts, whatever. I, I talk about this a lot, okay? But the back of your quilt is another opportunity to make something beautiful. When you're at a quilt show, you can only see one side of the quilt because there's just not enough space for everybody to have like a complete walk around. As a quilt angel is what I was, that white glove was for me to be able to pick up the corner of the quilt and then pull it back so that you could see the backing of the quilt too. Because 
on a lot of the examples, like the front is stunning, obviously it made it into the show, but you get a feel for like the density of the stitching. You get a feel for how they quilted it, um, what colors they chose. If you are in that setting and you see somebody walking around that has a white glove, they are usually the ones that can touch the quilts, okay? They are given very specific instructions on where they can touch the quilt and how they can touch the quilt because we do want to make sure that these are preserved for a very, very long time and they're well taken care of while they're in the hands of the quilt show. One more thing that I wanna share with you and then I will get to the slideshow of beautiful, beautiful, inspirational quilts that you are going to absolutely just eat up. I'm so excited to show all of these photos to you. There was a section this year at the quilt show of antique quilts. And there usually is some type of showing of antique quilts, whether it be from a specific time period or of a specific style, um, there is usually some way to show these older quilts. Now, I'm gonna show you these pictures right here. This is like of what the quilt name is, who the artist is, and what style the quilt was in, okay? What do you see in common between every single one of these quilts. Did you catch it? Unknown name, unknown name, unknown name, unknown name. These are quilts and you can, if you wanna go back and look, they're from like the 1800s on up, okay? And they are amazing pieces of art, but the story is lost on these quilts. We don't know what family they came from. We don't know where the fabric came from. We don't know who spent. And these are all like hand stitched, okay? They took time by a human being a long time ago and the story is lost. When you make your quilts, you need to document it, okay? Because these quilts, and there was probably, I'm gonna guess a rough estimate of maybe 25 of these antique quilts that were in the International Quilt Festival, the largest quilt show in the entire world, hanging up for thousands of people to see over the several days, and there's no credit to give. Now, I will say a couple of them did have the artist that went with them, but most of them, this, they're just, they're beautiful but there is no credit to give to who made that quilt. So when you make your quilt, document it, put a label on it. You know, they have these panels. Now, there's no excuse, put a label on it. So when your quilt is hanging up in a show, I don't know, 200 years from now, <laughs> when you are long gone and finished with your quilting duties of the world, we will be able to still celebrate you as an artist. And I do have to give a quick little shout out to my buddy. This is my son, Maddox. He really wanted to come with me to the quilt show. He loves it. So for, this was our third year and he went with me and I just have to give a shout out to him because he's so cute. So without further ado, if you are not able to make it to the Houston International Quilt Festival, here you go. I hope you enjoy these pictures. I love you so much. I'm Kristen with icstarsquilting.com. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you give me a thumbs up on this video. I would love it. Enjoy all of these beautiful, beautiful pictures of these quilts. Calm down, relax, take a few minutes to yourself, look at these quilts and really, really soak in all of the beauty that is in these quilts. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you soon.